Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. You are listening to BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on occasion. Let's get to it. Anthony for three. Welcome to the show. Episode 739 of the podcast. It is the night after <clears throat> the Knicks lose to the Houston Rockets in Houston. So as I'm recording, it is Thursday, November 5th. Or, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Tuesday, November 5th. It's actually uh, election day. Uh, for those of you who give a crap about which idiot will be running the country the next four years. Um, I don't. Let's talk Knicks, man, because the last night was last night was a was a tough game to watch. Uh, the Knicks went into Houston. You know, this has been a scrappy team. They gave the Knicks problems last year. You have that controversial loss. It's a it's a young team that's getting better. They have a good head coach. They've got a lot of good young talent, and um, so if you let this team, especially in their home arena, get any sort of momentum and you fall behind early like that, you're going to have problems. And that's exactly what the Knicks did. They had no energy from the start of this game. They were getting killed on the glass early. You know, Cat was in foul trouble. You know, you were down by as many as 15 in the first half. Um, When he left the floor, you got killed on the boards even more. Houston second unit comes in and they're outpacing the Knicks. The Knicks wrapped up the half on a pretty good note. They pulled it, I think, to within six at the half, five. Um, out the gate in the third quarter, Carl Anthony Towns looked pretty good in this, uh, you know, in, in a few minutes stint there. He was dominating the post and. Then the Knicks fell behind big in the third quarter again. They fell behind double figures, but Brunson got a few baskets to fall late, and the Knicks entered the fourth down six again. And I believe they cut it to one point um, in the fourth quarter. But overall, there was just not enough consistency. There wasn't enough flow in the offense, uh, and the defense was very indisciplined. And the Knicks would lose to the Rockets 109-97. to um, your game balls. We'll start with that before we get into the big topics. I thought the best Nick among the starting unit Bing bang. was OG Ananobi. 21 points last night, six rebounds, two assists. He shot five for six, which is 83% from three. One steal, two blocks, seven of 14 overall shooting. Big to see that, man. It was awesome to see OG Ananobi finally knock down some shots. You know, he had been struggling with the three, but he was in rhythm. That spot right on the wing in the corner, that's where he shoots his threes very efficiently. Um, So a good game for OG Ananobi in a game where not many Knicks stood out. Um, Without OG in this game, the Knicks probably lose this one by 20. You know, they lost by... 12, was it? They probably lose by 20 points if OG Ananobi doesn't play. Um, His defense, his help defense in particular, was very sharp. 
uh, but it's three point shooting, you know, just knocking down everything that was passed to him was humongous. Uh, and then you go to the, the bench, which has been so thin for the Knicks. Uh, and when Deuce McBride has an awful night that he did, and when Jericho Sims, when Jericho Sims is Jericho Sims, it's like, well, how, how the hell do you even hand out a game ball to, to a guy in a second unit? It, it was Tyler Kolek who got, what, five, six minutes of action? Who gets his first game ball? Um, because, yeah, Deuce McBride was awful. He was 0 for 9. Couldn't find the basket once. Um, you know, Kolek came in for a few minutes there. I liked what I saw. Knocked down a three-pointer. No hesitance in the jump shot. Took it right away from the left wing. Uh, made a nice pass. He's known for his passing skills, his lob throwing. Uh, but I believe he made a nice pass to the corner uh, that led to an assist. So, good for Tyler Kolek. A lot of the Knicks fans won him. Um, but, yeah, he gets his first game ball of the year, as does OG Ananobi. But, folks, the Knicks lost this one once again, 109-97, and um, you're starting to see a developing theme. And that is, this Knicks team continues to struggle against switch defenses. It's definitely, it's a real issue. Um, I guess the question next is how big of an issue is this going to become? Because the Knicks in six games so far have shown that they're very comfortable against drop coverage. They're very comfortable against traditional defenses who lack aggressive coverages. But when you're going up against rosters like the Boston Celtics, who've got White, Tatum, Brown, Holiday, when you're going up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, who've got Mobley, Garland, Okoro, Jared Allen. And then when you're going up against the team, a team like the Rockets last night, who have, you know, tons of switchable wings, Brooks, Van Vliet, uh, Smith, you know, Thompson, tons of guys just they struggle they struggle against switchable personnel um just you see it it's as clear as day the ball movement slows down when you're when the Knicks go up against a switch defense and when the ball movement slows down you're not going to get the frequency of three point attempts that you want the Knicks only took 28 threes last night which is why so far here in the early going, Carl Anthony Towns hasn't really taken off yet, and he's been not featured enough in offense as a lot of Knicks fans, including myself, would like to see him featured. You know, he only had nine shot attempts against Boston, two three-point attempts. He only had eight shot attempts against Cleveland, two three-point attempts. He only took 17 shots last night, two of them three-point attempts. Two field goals in the fourth quarter alone. And, you know, of those 17 attempts that he took, how many of them were actually shots that were coming off of sets, out of offensive sets? You know, you're seeing all those defenses that switch, they're putting the wing on Cat. They're putting their wings on Cat as opposed to throwing their bigs at him. So... I think the Knicks are going to have to find some way to adjust to that, maybe set Cat up on the deep post, you know, um, free up some separation for him, screen on the elbows, a wedge screen to create separation for your big there, you know, put Cat on the deep post, exploit the mismatch when they throw a wing at him. That could be an idea. You saw a few, a little bit of that um, in the preseason with Mikal Bridges, Wedge screening for him. But that's probably an idea to get him some more attempts, some more touches on the post. And, yeah, it was just a really rough offensive showing. The Knicks, Brunson played right into the Rockets' hands with, with the matchup hunting. You know, the only, the only true... 
targetable switch is Shangun, right? He's the only guy you can really hunt. Um, but Brunson was way too often last night attacking Thompson, who's just not a guy you attack. You know, he was rejecting screens right into Thompson. He was isolating him in space. He just, he wasn't passing out of that matchup enough, especially in the second half, for a guy in Thompson who's not a mismatch. You know, it's just, it didn't, the, the offensive approach just didn't make much sense to me. Um, Brunson's isolation has not been super efficient lately. And when I mean lately, I mean dating back to last year. You know, he was a very efficient ISO scorer in 2023-2024. But he did see a, a drop-off last year. And this year, to start the season, he's been struggling. Um, so you're getting a lot of Knicks fans. Oh, Brunson should have been taking all those shots in crunch time and stupid decisions. Trust your teammates, and I get that. But it's going to be important that he just takes high-quality shots, you know? Because in the NBA postseason, that's what happens all the time. Your best player eventually is going to take the bulk of the shots down the stretch. That's just how this goes. Um, But I thought last night, it wasn't that he was taking a lot of shots. It was that he's forcing lower quality shots. You know? Um, And hopefully that's something that gets cleaned up soon because the Knicks don't have any other isolation weapons outside of Brunson. And again... In the NBA playoffs, you're going to need the isolation game for when the defense takes away your half-court sets. So, I I just need to see some more efficiency from him in isolation. Now, the good news is that you could look at it with a silver lining and say that last season, Brunson didn't have ample spacing. Arguably had the worst spacing in the league. This season, it's a brand new team. So he's still trying to get used to playing with these guys. And it's a very small sample of six games. You have to believe with better spacing this year, he's going to take advantage of that um, and become more efficient in isolation again. But the approach versus switch defenses has to be better. Thompson is just, he's just way too elite of a defender to attack like Brunson was. You know, he was getting over the top of screens early and easily. He has the wingspan to recover and contest if Brunson creates separation. Doesn't matter as much. He's a very disciplined defender. He stays low, doesn't bite on any of Brunson's moves. He didn't bite much at all last night. Not None of his fakes, hesitations, or fake rejects, inside-out dribble moves. None of that was really fooling uh, Eamon Thompson. So their approach to a defense that's going to switch it, it just, there has to be more ball movement. There has to be quicker decision-making, and there has to be smarter matchup hunting. It would help if the Knicks weren't running such a thin bench, Um, but so many guys, just like last year, are already injured. You know, it started with Landry Shamit in the preseason. He's out a while. Uh, Precious Achua, he's out a while. Campaign just got hurt. He's going to be sitting out maybe another game or two. We'll see. It's kind of day-to-day. It's a hamstring, I believe. Mitchell Robinson's going to be out for at least another month. Uh, Probably two months. So, it's just, it's a seven-man rotate. Deuce couldn't buy a bucket last night, and Jericho has been brutal for this team. So Tibbs has been forced into a seven-man rotation, which is just not a tenable formula to survive an 82-game season. And it won't be that way, but you know, right now, that's why the Knicks are 3-3. Three and three. It's no shock. You're starting five plus Deuce and Jericho, and that's it. So last night, you look up at the box score, Brunson's playing 42 minutes, Ananobi played 40, Mikal Bridges played 40, Hart was close to 40 minutes. Towns only got 32 minutes because he was in foul trouble in the second quarter there. So if you give Tibbs that opportunity, he's going to lean heavy with the first unit. And I know fans, we want the young kids. We want Kolak. We want um, the other guy, Huck Porty. 
when campaign gets healthy in a few days, I don't think we're going to see Kolek. I, I just, Tibbs trusts his veterans more than he does the younger players. And that's, that's been a theme with him forever. And it's, it's something us Yankees fans are used to. He would rather seven guys than an inexperienced eighth man as you saw last night with Kolak only getting five minutes. You know, I, I do think what must happen um, if the Knicks finish this road trip with the loss, I, I think you have to pull the plug on Jericho Sims. Um, and you have to go and give us, see what Huck Porty can do, who looks pretty good, but you have to try and give that guy some real run. Because what we're getting from Jericho Sims right now is is not going to cut it. Um, I know the Knicks just signed Matt Ryan. So, you know, that's some three-point shooting for you. But what you really need at the moment is you need rim protection, right? And Jericho Sims is not giving you any rim protection. Your rim protection overall has been lacking because Towns... Obviously doesn't protect the basket well. Jericho is just way too small. Uh, again, Precious and Mitch, they're both injured. I mean, you heard, I don't know if anybody else heard Ime Udoka's comments last night. And I quote, he said, With Towns at five and Sims coming behind him, I think we felt we could attack the basket quite a bit, and we did that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The Knicks were... Zero match for Shangun last night, who finished with 25 points on 11 of 15 shooting. He's an old school big. He doesn't waste time on the perimeter. He'll take threes. He'll make a couple. But I believe all 11 shots came inside the arc. He's going to play the post. And he's way too big of a mismatch for what we have down there right now. OG Anunoby was too small to cover him without bringing help. Same with Josh Hart. You know, Sangoon would just attack every single Josh Hart closeout when he was switched on to him, take him to the basket. Um, he would take OG on a low B baseline. You know, Towns has the size, but he provides no resistance. You know, his defense, it's bad. You know, and it's Shangoon was just going right through him on the low post, spin moves, hook shots, uh, had the end one finish on him. And when you had Towns in drop coverage, if Shangun got a little bit of separation, he was obviously going to beat him with a jumper because Towns doesn't get up quick enough. So, you know, it's tough. And, you know, when when you saw the Knicks bring a double team and, and bring some help defense over, it, it didn't... They're still uncomfortable in those situations, man. Clearly, they're still very uncomfortable and they're not fully in sync when they're switching, there's still some confusion there. You saw in the third quarter, there was a possession I took down on my notes here. The Knicks were down seven points. They blitzed the Van Vliet action off the screen as opposed to switching it. And that left that left uh, Dylan Brooks wide open for a three. He knocks it down to extend the deficit to the double figures. Um, I took down another note fourth quarter last night the Knicks were down three points they trapped green on pick and roll with Thompson and this led to a Thompson wide open dunk off the short roll to make it a two possession game so it, it just seems like they're still not a hundred percent in sync with their blitzing and their help defense and their switching that's obviously going to take some more time Communication, chemistry doesn't come in six games. It's not going to come in six games when you have a brand new starting five, basically, outside of one guy, two guys. So it's it's it was tough to watch their defense at the basket. Um, I didn't even like the defense up top. Like at the point of attack, you know, Van Vliet got 19 points. I thought Mikhail Bridges has been underwhelming defensively last night didn't love what I saw and that's going to be important it starts at the point of attack that's where everything goes from obviously but 
Mikal Bridges was brought here to be a really good wing defender who can lock you down at the point of attack. He's a good wing defender, but he's really good at guards. And if he's not shutting down the point of attack, it's going to lead... You know, it's, it's a domino effect because he's way too important there because you want to keep... In, in a sense, he's your glue because he's involved in the primary action. And then with him locking down... The point guard and ISO off the screen, you can then have OG play in his natural help role. You can have Josh Hart be in his role, and everybody else plays off of that. So if Mikal Bridges is getting cooked, as the kids say, in his point of attack defense, everything else kind of goes to shit. The rotations get screwed up. So I, I just think, again, I know I'm repeating myself, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. Uh, the Knicks are off to a very slow start. They're only 3-3 three and three to start the season. I was hoping that they were going to find some consistency after stringing together a couple wins in a row. But they're kind of right back to where they were. They're 3-3. Three and three. They, need, they, they need to start finding some consistency. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm worried yet. But, you know, I said, let, let's see what they look like after 10 games. So hopefully... They have a really bad Hawks team coming up. They're three and five to start the year. Trey Young, I believe, is probable for that game, but I know that there are a couple of guys out, including Bodanovich, um, two others, so I don't remember. But it's the last game of the road trip before the Knicks head back home and host the Bucks at the Garden, who are struggling. That's a Friday game. But up next, you got the Hawks. We'll see what happens there. Um, and I think that's all I have. So what we're going to do is head to our break. And then when we come back from break, we'll wrap it up with our trivia. And I think that is all we have there. So let's get to break. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stay with us. Hey there. Thanks for listening in so far. If you enjoy this episode, please give us a five star rating and review on Apple podcasts. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much. You can follow us on social media as well. On Instagram, we're at BD4Pod and at Rob J. Carbone. On X, we're at BD4Pod and at RJCBD4. And on Facebook, we're BD4. If you're interested in our website, just go to www.bd4blog.com. You can subscribe to our blog on there right on the front page. Just like on the podcast, we cover Yankees, Knicks, and MMA. Also on our website are the links to the different platforms for the podcast. Thanks so much. Studio 69 Productions is a podcast production agency created by Leo Rodriguez to allow content creators to market their podcast. It's an online platform that will market your podcast or any other project that you're working on. Get in touch with Leo Rodriguez from Studio 69 Productions. You can find Studio 69 Productions on Instagram at Studio69NJ. Studio 69 Productions, where dreams are heard and born. Thanks for listening to BD4, where there is no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA, Yanks every series, Knicks every game, and MMA on occasion.
All right. Welcome back to the show, episode 739 of the podcast. Let's wrap this up. We, we have a very short episode just because... Um, as the chair squeaks. Just because, uh, I don't know, there's not much to take away. I um, feel like we hit on everything we needed to hit. So for this episode, our trivia question... Who was the Knicks' starting point guard to start the 2017-2018 NBA season? All right. Who was the Knicks' starting point guard to start the 2017-18 NBA season? Let me know the answer. And I think that's it, everybody. The Knicks lose 109-97 to in Houston last night. Just very sluggish out the gate. Uh, and again, did not like the way their half-court offense was looking. Um, did not lo- like the way they looked at the basket. And the bench is just very thin. Um, I am curious to see what the Knicks do at the trade deadline. You know, that's obviously in a few months. But you're going to get some guys back. You're going to get a Chua back. You're going to get... Mitch back, campaign back. Um, then it gets really interesting, just in terms of rotations and spacing. But for now, you're going to have to just keep treading water, and hopefully the Knicks find some type of rhythm because the uh, the Eastern Conference is looking pretty good this year. You know, Boston's Boston. The Cavs are on an just unbelievable run right now. Credit to them. Uh, I think they're 8-0 now. So... The Knicks do need to be careful here. Don't slip up. Don't, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm trying to be patient, but I don't want to at the same time just like treat these games like they're nothing because they all count. They're all part of the 82. So let's hope they find a rhythm in Atlanta. And um, that's that, everybody. Appreciate you all tuning into the episode. Episode 739 of BD4 is in the books. If you don't know... Where to find me? You can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram at BD4Pod. I'm on X at BD4Pod. And I'm also on Facebook at BD4. All right. You can find my blog, which I'm on occasionally here or there. Every few months, I'll write an article www.bd4blog.com. On that website, you can find the blog, my social media plugs, where to find the podcast itself. You know, you can watch the podcast on YouTube and Spotify. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. So thank you all, and I will see you in the next show when we're talking Knicks Hawks in episode 740. If you have not yet, go check out 738, where we talk Yankees offseason. Did a little bit of a primer for the upcoming offseason. So go check that out. But as for this episode, that's it. Folks, thank you. I'll stop rambling. I'll see you next time. This episode was brought to you by Anchor. Hey there. If you stayed the entire way through, we thank you immensely for it. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and that you come back for the next episode real soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, download these episodes, and share them with your friends as well. BD4 is a five-star podcast simply because of you, and we'd like to keep it that way. Have a wonderful day. Go Yankees and go Knicks.